hello everyone in today's lecture we will see the new topic that is backward obstructions now we know the meaning of obstructions obstruction is nothing but any object or any body or in any structure which obstructs the movement of anything for example if we have to move from a one place to another and there is a obstruction of a big wall in between then that wall is called as obstruction so in airport also it is similar to that so airport obstructions are the objects or it may be bodies which are present in the path of aircraft or on the facilities provided for the aircraft that cause problems to the safe and easy movement of the aircraft so obstructions obstructions are nothing but the objects or either they may be bodies which cause problems or restricts the safe and easy movement of the aircraft so obstructions are mainly related to the type of development what type of development there is there and the height of development in case of buildings these obstructions mainly depends upon the type of the development at a particular area and the height of the development in case of buildings okay now this obstructions are classified into two types that is imaginary surfaces and the objects with actual heights so we will see what is imaginary surfaces obstructions these are the assumed surfaces they are imaginary the name itself tells us that they are imaginary so they are the assumed surfaces on any airport by which the aircraft should move above of that particular surface only means imaginary surfaces are those surfaces they are selected for a particular purpose for what purpose the aircraft should move only move above that particular surface only we will see in the figures now what is objects with actual heights obstruction type second obstruction type is the objects with actual heights so different types of objects different types of development in the vertical direction and its height are the objects with actual heights means any development in a vertical direction with respect to its height comes under the objects with actual height obstruction now we will see in detail the imaginary surfaces obstructions these imaginary surfaces are basically established surfaces in relation to the airport and to each runway above which no obstruction should project these are the imaginary surfaces we have seen that these are the assume or a particular place they are selected for a particular reason so for reason the aircraft will move above these surfaces only so on the surfaces there are no obstructions so these imaginary surfaces are basically established surfaces and to each runway above which no obstruction should be project now how this imaginary surfaces sizes selected on what factors does this sizes depends so the size of imaginary surface depends upon first the category of each runway it depends upon the category what type of category the runway is and the type of approach planned for that runway now what is the type of approach which is planned for that particular runway these are the factors on which size of the imaginary surface depends so there are this further this imaginary surfaces are divided into sub types so imaginary surface are divided into approach surface conical surface horizontal surface take off plane surface transitional surface these are all types of imaginary surfaces now in this figure we can see that the a is the primary surface this is the runway 
and point B, the P step or B portion is the clear zone surface. Okay. And C and B are the approach or departure, clearance surface, glide angle and horizon. So, this D, this is the C. Approach, departure, clear surface. And this portion is the approach or departure, clear surface, horizontal. The portion E is the inner horizontal surface. And portion F is the conical surface. And G is the outer horizontal surface. Between, we can see that E is the horizontal surface, inner horizontal and G is the outer horizontal. In between this inner and outer, there is a conical surface. And H is the, see, you can see that the markings like H is this transitional surface. These are all types of imaginary surfaces. Clear? Now we will see one by one. Now, approach surface. They are provided at the end of landing side of runway. This approach surface is provided at the end of landing side of the runway. It is generally of trapezoidal in shape. Then, diverging away with the upgrade. It is diverging away with the upgrade. And longitudinally centered on the extended center line of the runway. So, these are the points which helps us to distinguish this approach surface. Clear? See. This figure shows the imaginary surfaces. See, this is the approach surface. Approach surface is provided at the end of landing. This is the end of the landing. Okay. So this is a typical isometric view of airport surface zones. Please see the figure. See conical surface zone, horizontal surface zone, primary surface zone, runways provided, then the Transitional surface zone, abrupt surface zone, abrupt surface zone, transitional surface zone. So this is the isometric view of the airport surfaces zone. So now we will see what is takeoff climb surface. This takeoff climb surface is similar to the approach surface. It is provided at the takeoff end of the runway. Now what is the difference between approach surface and takeoff climb surface? Approach surface is provided at the end of the landing of the runway. And this is provided at the takeoff end of the runway. And it is in the, this takeoff climb surface is in the tra trapezoidal shape. Now we will see the horizontal surface. These are extended from the upper edge of the transition surface and ends at the lower or inner circular edge of the conical surface. See. Extends from the upper edge of the transition surface and ends at the inner circular area of the conical surface. The height of this horizontal surface extends from 150 meters to 9900 meters or to 15,000 meters from airports having runway length more than 1500. The conditions are given depending upon that the height of the outer horizontal surface is distinguished. Now we will see the conical surface. This conical surface is extended upwards and outwards from the inner horizontal surface to a point which is at some height above the horizontal surface. 
Usually this conical surface is in circular in shape. You can see here the conical surface is circular in shape. Clear? Now we will see the objects with actual height. Any object which exceeds the certain limiting height above the ground is considered to, an to be an obstruction to the air navigation. Now the limitation of particular height, particular height is given for a particular area. For very different different areas, the height limitation of height is different. So any object which exceeds this limiting height above the ground then that is considered as an obstruction to the air navigation. Any object within 4.5 km distance from the runway end is considered to be as obstruction if the actual height is more than 30 meters above the ground or above the level of the approached end of the runway whichever is higher. So, the obstruction, the actual height for any object means any object within 4.5 kilometers near to the runway should have a height up to 30. If it, its height goes up more than 30 meters then that object is considered to be as the obstruction. Here this is object, so any object which is located beyond a distance of 4.5 kilometers from the runway end is considered as an obstruction if its height above 30 meters is increased by more than 4.5 meters for each additional 1.4 kilometer distance from the runway. Now see, this condition was for when any object within 4.5 kilometer distance from the runway. And this condition is when the object is beyond the distance that is 4.5 kilometers from the runway end. At that case, 30 meters, 30 meter plus 7.5 meter addition per 1.5 kilometer was required. So if it goes above that, then that was considered to be the obstruction for the aircrafts. So when we reach this 15 kilometers from the runway end, it should not exceed that 75 meters. So clear about the obstructions. When any object is within 4.5 kilometers near the runway, the height should not go beyond 30. And when the object is beyond the 4.5 kilometers from the runway end, then the height can be 30 plus 4.5 meters greater per 1.5 kilometer distance from the runway. Now the next point is any object which projects above the minimum approach flight altitude or whose height exceeds 150 meters above the ground is also considered to be an obstruction. Now we have seen the two conditions now three condition is that any object which is projecting above the minimum approach flight altitude or whose height exceeds 1.150 meters above the ground, ground that object is also considered as an obstruction for the aircrafts. So these three points are very important to understand which object is considered to be as obstruction. So now we will move towards the runway clear zone. What is runway clear zone? Why it is needed? It is used to indicate the innermost portion of the approach zone. The runway clear zone is used to indicate that the innermost portion of the approach zone and it is to be provided at the ends of the runway. So runway clear zone is provided at the ends of the runways to indicate the innermost portion of the approach zone. Now, how this runway clear zone length is 
considered or determined the length of the clear zone is determined by the distance required to reach a height of 30 meters from the appropriate approach surface clear the length of this runway clear zone is determined by the distance which is required to reach a height of 30 meters from the appropriate approach surface see this is the approach area this is the runway now this is the runway clear zone or protection zone it is called as protection zone so the length of clear zone is determined by the distance required to reach a height of 30 meters from the appropriate approach zone now this is the approach area or approach zone from this 30 meter height reach karna hai to reach this 30 meters height the distance required is nothing but the runway clear zone clear now we will see what is the turning zone turning zone is the area of an airport other than the approach area and it is intended for the turning operations of the aircraft the name itself turn uh, tells us that it is the zone where the aircraft can be turned so it is the area in a airport other than the approach area which is used for the operations turning operations of the aircraft in case of emergencies like failure of engine or trouble in smooth working of aircrafts experienced at the start of the takeoff so if there is any emergency then at that case when the aircraft needs to take some turning operations the area of an airport other than the approaching area is called as turning zone any object which is located within a distance of 4.5 kilometers from the arp is considered as an obstruction if its height exceeds the 51 meters above the ground and the established elevation whichever is moved okay any object which is located beyond a distance of 4.5 kilometers from arp is considered as an obstruction if its height exceeds 51 kilometers plus 50 meters for each additional 1.5 kilometers from arp okay if the value exceeds 150 meters within 15 kilometers it remains see okay now you may ask what is arp arp is nothing but the airport reference point okay then we will move towards the next point that is zoning laws the formation of suitable zoning laws is very essential part of an airport master plan and are to be implemented as soon as the final selection of the airport site is made zoning laws are very necessary before planning any airport site so the airport are involved in the following two types of zone the height zoning there are two types of zoning that height zoning and the land use zoning now we will see what is height zoning what is the main objective of the height zoning the height zoning is mainly aimed to protect the approaches to the airport from the obstructions height zoning helps to protect the approaches to the airport from the obstruction it regulates the height of the structures on the land surrounding the airport means this height zoning laws helps us to make some standard heights means we have seen the conditions the height should not be more up to 4 4.5 kilometers 
okay that way the second one is the land use zone land mein land use zoning kya karta hai it governs the type of development which is taking place at the adjoining areas of the airport so we know that near the airport there must not be the industrial area mrdc should not be near to the area airport area so this land use zoning governs that what type of development is taking place near the area of the airport these are classified as the land use zoning is classified classified as first is closely related like terminal buildings parking apparent runways taxi ways and maintenance facilities the non aviation use like commercial industrial residential or recreational activities the smoke obstructs the visibility and hence industries even out the dust and industries are not allowed so mrdc is not allowed near the airport the agricultural land may be permitted as long as they don't attract birds so this are the their aims the aims of the land use zoning now we will see what are the zoning laws following factors must be considered with respect to the zoning laws the legal interest the nature of ordinance the zoning maps okay this three factors must be considered with respect to the zoning laws a zoning regulation should protect the interest of both airport authority and those of the owners of the land surrounding the airport it should not interfere with the legal rights of the airport owners the nature of ordinance zoning laws should be framed to promote the welfare of the public their comfort their morals their safety and health the third factor is the zoning maps it helps in showing the property lines the land use patterns the permissible height of structures the limits of applicability of zoning laws 